The sassafras is a tree that I normally associate with a natural setting, but I really like the idea of them in the landscape. They just offer a ton of appeal and charm, and they just have a really fascinating history. Now they do have a deep tap root, which means that they're not usually available in ball and burlap form. But if you happen to find one small enough at a nursery that was grown in a container, then I definitely recommend that you consider bringing one home. Check out the leaves on this tree. Sassafras can have four different leaf shapes, all in the same tree. They could be simple without any lobes. They could be mitten shaped, one for the left hand, and they even have ones that look like a mitten for the right hand. Or they can have three lobes, and these always remind me of turkey footprints. Traditional gumbo recipes use a powder called filet for a thickening agent. And the way you get that is by dehydrating sassafras leaves and then grinding them up into a fine powder. Sassafras is a very aromatic tree and just about every part of it has a history of either culinary or medicinal uses. Perhaps most famously, it was used for flavoring root beer. Now there are some health concerns tied to the consumption of sassafras, so you don't typically see them in modern root beer recipes. But at one time, sassafras was a major commodity and an export, and it was widely used by Native Americans for all sorts of wellness and medicinal purposes. Now, the popularity of the sassafras extends beyond humans. A wide variety of wildlife will visit a sassafras tree for its spring flowers or its autumn berries. And speaking of autumn, the sassafras is a great fall tree with leaves of yellow and orange and red and purple. And the bark of a sassafras gets more and more attractive the older it gets. It has very deep fissured, flat, corky bark pieces that always make it stand out from other trees, especially in the winter months. Now they're hardy from zones four through nine, and they're native from Maine to Ontario, all the way down to Texas, and then over to Florida. Now they don't usually get terribly huge. They usually top out at about 60 feet. You can plant them in moist acidic soil in full sun or partial shade. Now there are some pests and diseases that would give sassafras some trouble, so make an extra effort to do proper planting techniques and strong cultural practices so that it will thrive in your landscape and be enjoyed by multiple walks of life for years to come.